Welcome to PhD and D on YouTube and another meeting of the minds to start off this week. I am going to go straight into the topic of the week, and which was inspired a little bit by another YouTuber. I'll say that in here in a second. But stick around because at the end of the video, I will in fact be recapping last week's meeting of the minds. Uh, an idea presented to me by Carl at Natural 20 Films. Great idea. Not everyone has a chance to check back and see the comments or maybe not even the video responses from week to week. And last week was very heavy in comments um, as far as the discussion went. So I will recap that at the end of this video. But first, meeting of the minds. It's time for the minds of the YouTube community to gather because I am going to bring a topic which I feel is a little bit deeper, a little bit more of theory this week, which I like to get back to. And I like to keep meeting the minds as much in the theory of gaming as I can versus mechanics or tips or things like that, uh, which occasionally are good to discuss. But let's get back into the theory of things, talk a little bit about this will go into role playing specifically, and it can be applied, you know, across all genres, all gaming systems, because this week's Meeting of the Minds is what, what makes a character come alive. What is what is truly driving a character to the point where they are alive in your eyes? What do I mean by that? I mean, and first of all, this video is, I had it kind of mulling over in my mind, and I actually had another video recorded for this week, but decided to put this one out because Dawn Forge Cast put out a video about making a character, not a gimmick, which to me was just a sign that, you know, this in a sense goes along with that. I'm just going to drop this one this week and save the other one for another time. So check out his video first, if you haven't, about uh, talking about a character that is, you know, an actual character and not a gimmick. This, you don't have to necessarily, I'm not taking anything from his video, I'm just, in my eyes, taking it another step and saying what actually brings a character to life in your eyes. Again, what, I mean, what do I mean by that? Is it decision making? Is it the fact that you know, you are making decisions as your character, you're making decisions consistent with that character's personality, background, you know, is it decision based? Is it background based? Is a character alive once they have a background? Once they have a story, are they, you know, do they have life breathed into them at that point? Is it their voice? And by voice, I mean, you know, kind of like a book or a novel has a voice to it, you know, is it their overall voice? that brings them to life. Once a voice has been established, are they alive? Is it an accent? You know, the actual physical voice you're giving them, or the actual audible voice, I should say, that you're giving them. Is it an accent that brings a character to life? Or is it traits? You know, a certain trait that this character has, or a secret that this character contains that finally breathes them into life from numbers on a page or words on a page to an actual living character in your game. Um, and when do you know that your character is alive? When do you as a, as a gamer or as a player come to realize, you know, hey, this character I've made is, you know, he's alive. He's a living character now. So how do you know when that is? Or when, when do you know when that is? Um, and by that, with that, I should say, I'm going to present my point of view here. I know when a character is fully alive, one of my characters that I'm role-playing, when the effort to get into that character starts to disappear. There's always an initial effort to stay consistent with this character's background, traits, history, what I've created in a story sense. There is an initial effort to play consistent to that and stick with that. But there comes a point when that effort kind of fades away. And it's very simple for me. I can jump right into that character. My decisions are automatic. They are consistently what that character would decide on. You know, I talk as that character. I say nothing out of character. I am fully capable of just playing, you know, four hours, six hours in character and I'm not feeling like I'm having to put in this great deal of effort anymore. That is when a character to me is truly alive because that is when the player me has almost stepped out of the picture. He's not trying to 
breathe life into the character anymore. Seeing yourself as, and not in a conceited way, but seeing yourself as a like a deity to this character. You are trying to bring this character to life. Trying to bring this form to life. And at the point when you can sit back after a game session and be like, wow, you know, I didn't do anything. That character took over that game. That, for me, is when a character is fully alive. So, the discussion this week, just what brings a character to life in your eyes? What does he have to have to have that life? And when do you know, or how do you know when they are fully alive within that role-playing game? That, I'm going to keep it short. I want to keep it kind of open-ended there. Please dive in with comments below. Dive in with video responses on this one. Um, you can carry the conversation on over at Facebook or on Twitter now because I've got accounts there both under phd and if those are easier for you. But please, you know, put in your two cents with this topic because it's going to be very individual. It's going to be very, I think, different among people. And it's going to be really cool to see in this community, you know, what is the difference between living characters amongst all these, you know, great minds for the meeting of the minds. So that is this week's meeting of the minds. What gives a character life? How do you know when that character is fully alive? Or when are they fully alive? Thanks for watching. And now a recap. Last week's Meeting of the Minds was on the topic of saying yes as a game master. One of the oldest, most you know, sacred rules, say yes to your, your players. You can do anything you want in Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, and by that I mean all role-playing games. You can do whatever you want. That's the initial premise. This is not real life. This is not a video game. You can do whatever you want. So always say yes to your players. That can become a problem, obviously. Players take advantage of that. Um, it can throw you for a loop if you're not prepared as a DM. So that was last week's Meeting of the Minds to kind of tackle that issue. And what we've kind of come to conclude was, amongst everybody, it has evolved into a yes but type of system where as a DM, or GM, sorry, you can say yes to those players, but they've got to do something else to achieve that. And what that does is that actually unlocks other opportunities, other you know hooks, other role-playing or story opportunities that weren't there before. Instead of just saying, yes, you can have whatever you want, yes, you can have it, but you need to get it. Or yes, I will give you the opportunity, but you need to actually roll and play to see if you can get what you want here rather than just magically giving them everything. If you want to, you know, player says, well, we, we probably have a map of the city, don't we? You could say yes there, and, you know, yes, you just have one, or yes, you can have a map, but you need to find somebody who can make the map or who has the map, something along those lines. So a yes, but system has evolved, and it also depends what you want from your game. Do you want, you know... Do you want your players to do certain things, or do you want to steer them a little bit away from certain things? As a, D, as a GM, you have kind of control over the game. You have a responsibility as well. That's a whole other topic. But, you know, if you're not wanting a certain aspect from that game, try to, you know, you don't have to necessarily say yes. Or will it enhance your game in any way? Will saying yes enhance the fun, enhance, you know, the excitement, or is this just some stupid off-topic thing where you can just say yes and it's harmless, or you can just say no and it's harmless. So that's kind of what the recap said last week. Emergent Play did a great video response to it, so check his out as well to kind of see his thoughts on it. But like I said, last week was mostly a discussion in the comments. So solving the yes issue by saying yes but, presenting more of an opportunity than anything to players without blocking them out completely and giving them a chance at what they want to achieve. So that was what yet last week's came up as. Go ahead and check that out if you want. Chime in on this week's, please, and we'll see where things go. Thanks for watching, and everyone have a great week of whatever you're doing, and hopefully you can get some good gaming in. Talk to you soon.